I'm going to talk about and demonstrate the Yes Nurse Peel. It was named after a German dermatologist, Dr. Max Yesner, who created it in the early 1940s. It's now more commonly referred to as Jesner's and is a very popular peel with professionals due to its safety and predictability. Let's get started, shall we? First, what is this peel and why do I want to use it? Jesner's is a blend of 14% salicylic acid, 14% lactic acid, and 14% Resorcinol. It's commonly used on oily and blemish prone skin, and because of the Resorcinol, it's excellent for pigmentation as well and is a staple when dealing with discolorations. Resorcinol may be a new ingredient name for you, and it's a great one for pigmentation. It's basically a blend of hydroquinone and catechol. It digs deep into the pores and helps to lighten many forms of hyperpigmentation, including PIH. Let's do a quick FAQ. Many want to know if this is a good peel to use for melasma. And that's a good question because you have to be extremely careful to avoid excess inflammation when you're treating it or you'll make it worse. Luckily, the salicylic and resorcinol are both excellent anti-inflammatories. So a couple of layers will be very acceptable as a treatment. Will you see a frost, also known as blanching, with this peel? You can. Resorcinol is known to cause a blanching of the skin and salicylic can cause some as well. This will generally be a speckly frost and not a solid one. What you may see is the salicylic crystallizing on the skin. This isn't the same and will wipe off with a wet cloth. A true frost will remain on the skin for several minutes. How will I know when I should stop applying layers? If this is your first time applying a Jesner's peel, we want you to stop after two layers. Get a feel of what that will do and how much social downtime you're gonna be dealing with. This would be considered a very superficial peel with a light erythema on the skin. That means it's pink. There's a possibility you could see a few speckled dots of frost as well. A superficial to a medium peel will be the same, but there'll be more speckled frosting across the skin. How do I apply this peel? This is applied just like a TCA peel, in layers. Each layer you apply will make the peel stronger. This is great because you can control how much flaking you're gonna get very easily. One or two layers will be very manageable. Several layers can be applied to make this a deep peel, but we highly recommend only adding on one additional layer at a time as you move up. Can I apply this with a TCA peel? This is very common in a professional setting. Jesner's is usually applied as a pretreatment since the salicylic and resorcinol help to dissolve the harder skin cells that could potentially block TCA penetration. It's also especially helpful with oilier skin types where the excess oil can block acid penetration or lead to an uneven uptake. This is something you will move up to if you feel that either the TCA or Jesner's isn't working well enough on their own. This is an advanced peeling method and we have a detailed tutorial video that you can follow if you're ready for this. On that note, I highly recommend that you use the acids individually before you think about mixing them together in this manner. Can I apply this with the Dream Peel? Yes, you can. By applying a layer of vitamin A after TCA or Jesner's peel, you can intensify the flaking. I'll demonstrate that in this peel video. How do you prepare for a medium depth peel such as this one? We want your skin to be healthy and exfoliated before we apply an acid. The perfect product to prepare your skin with is a retinol molecular serum every evening to even out the skin. I suggest the 20%. If you have prescription tretinoin, that's great too. Another alternative would be an acid serum like our Serum 15 or Serum 30. Very important note here for ethnic skin coloring, Fitzpatrick 3 to 6. If you have olive toned or darker skin, we always recommend you prepare with a melanin inhibitor, such as our Fade Bright or a hydroquinone product for at least two weeks prior to a deeper peel. This will help prevent post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Now, nothing is ever 100%, but this helps immensely 
So use it two times per day, every day. Then daily protect your skin with antioxidants such as vitamin C and always wear a broad screen SPF of at least 50. How many layers of Jesners can I apply? We generally recommend no more than four to five layers. In a professional setting, they may continue to apply based on how your skin's responding. So it's possible for you to work your way up to more, but you need to exert caution when applying salicylic and resorcinol. Before we get started, here are a few warnings. Always drink some water before and after applying your Jesner's peel. Vitamin A will cause extreme sensitivity. This can make your peel feel more intense than it needs to. To decrease this, stop usage of retinoids about five days prior to peel application. If you aren't sensitive, you can use your products right up to the peel application. Stronger peels like Jesner's and TCA could possibly cause unintended color changes in the skin. That's why we recommend the application of Fade Bright or another melanin inhibitor before a peel. It's less likely to with lighter skin types, but it can happen to anyone at any time. The higher percentage, or the higher potential of this occurring. Do not use any scrubbing granules or abrasive scrub sponges for a few days prior to a peel. This will lead to an uneven application of the acid. Do not use needling techniques the same week as a peel. If you perform needling, wait an entire week or more before applying any peels to your skin. The same thing goes for aftercare. Be done flaking 100% before you start needling again. Never apply a peel to tan skin. There is excess melanin and that can lead to spotting. Do not apply Jesners if you're pregnant. Do not apply to skin that has been waxed or shaved within 24 hours. Do not use peels if you've been on Accutane in the past year. Do not apply Jesners if you are unhealthy or have active herpes simplex. You may apply a peel after you're on a preventative prescription only. Now, let's get on to the application. Do you have everything you need? Number one, your manual. Clean skin, prep solution, gauze pads, gloves if you don't want your fingers to peel, and something to fan with. Aftercare products, luminosity or dream peel. Now you can peel along with me. If you have extremely sensitive skin, you can always use a numbing cream prior to any chemical peel. Any of the Cane products work really well. Just follow their instructions, and once your time is up, wipe it off, wash your face at least two times with one of our acid cleansers, take all the cream off, and then do your prep. All right, let's get started. Wash your face well. One of our acid cleansers would be an excellent choice. I use the AB for my acne prone skin. Our revitalizing glycolic is an excellent choice for anyone. Now pat everything dry and wipe your prep solution all over the areas you're going to be peeling. Why prep? If you don't remove the oils and any serums or creams from your skin, the acid won't penetrate evenly. This is very important. If you don't have our solution, you can use a 90% alcohol in its place. If you can't find that locally, the 70% should be fine. Just go over your skin at least two times to make sure it's nice and stripped. Now follow me. We're going to go horizontally, working our way from the top down. We're gonna go across the forehead, down your temples, the middle of your nose, and then just work your way down your face. Covering all areas that you're gonna peel. Now you can just fade it into the jawline if you're gonna stop on your face, or if you're gonna do your neck and chest, apply it there too. Just let that air dry for a few seconds. Now if you don't want to have peeling fingertips, make sure you have on some gloves. Most of the time I skip this, but go right ahead if you want to. Now it's time to apply the Jesners, and I wanna make a big point here. It is very important that you have enough solution on the pad. We want it wet, just not dripping wet. 
Now an easy way to do this is to get a little bowl. I just have a lid here. Take your solution and pour some in there. So now you can dip in here and shake any excess solution off in there as well. I like to completely saturate it. Take it out, make sure it's not dripping. Give it a little squeeze. And now we're ready to apply. All right, my pad is ready, so I'm gonna apply the first layer just like I did the prep solution, top to bottom. So, across the forehead, down your temples, down the middle of your nose, and then across your face, making sure to cover every area. Now, like I said, you can feather it into your neck or you can continue applying. Mine is plenty wet, so I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it. All the way down onto some spots here. All right, now that I'm done applying, I need to wait five minutes for the acid to react with my skin. I'll set a timer and then we can talk about a few things. By the five minute mark, some people can see erythema on the skin. This is very common with Jesners and to be expected. There's also a slight possibility you might see a tiny speckle or two of a frost. This would be from the resorcinol and it's perfectly normal. If you're seeing a white haze on your entire face, this isn't a frost. This is going to be the salicylic crystals that remain once the alcohol dries off. You'll see them magically vanish when you add the next wet layer of solution and then return again once it dries. All right, now that five minutes is up, I'm ready to apply another layer of Jesners. Now, I hate to waste solution and I hate to waste pads, so I always reuse my original pad, just add a little bit more solution and apply the same way. Not dripping, but wet. And now we wait five more minutes. Okay, time for the next layer. Now notice I am still not rinsing. I have rewet my gauze pad with more solution, gave it a squeeze, and now I'm gonna apply it one more time. Okay, when we've decided that this is the end of our peel, we just stop applying layers. You can now do one of two things. If you're truly bothered by the acid, you can rinse it off now with some ice cold water. Keep in mind, salicylic can only be diluted, so continue rinsing for a few minutes until your skin feels normal again. Then drink an eight ounce glass of water and apply your Dream Peel, Luminosity, or just your healing products, such as our Emu Oil or our Essential Healing Blend. Preferably, you'll want to leave the acid on for the next four plus hours. This helps you to get a better peel as the acids can work longer. Again, drink an eight ounce glass of water, which is highly recommended when applying salicylic or Jesners. Now, there are a couple of schools of thought here once our four hours are up. Do we rinse the Jesners off now and apply the finishing products? Or do we just leave it on and then apply the finishing products? Truly, either way is acceptable to us, including applying your Dream Peel or Luminosity immediately after finishing your layers. Personally, I like to do my peels before I go to bed, so waiting around for four hours before I apply my Dream Peel isn't gonna work for me. I would just apply it and then go to bed. I'm gonna apply it now since I'm all done. So just one pump is all you need. Oh, one pump is only all you need for your face. One pump is all you need for your face, but if you're doing your neck and chest, you might need another one. If you're doing this in the day hours though, you can just wait your four hours, rinse it off, and then apply the Dream Peel, Luminosity, or your healing products. Remember, if you're applying the Dream Peel, you will only apply this one time. 
as a finishing layer. And you will not apply any other retinoids such as luminosity for the remaining days. Rinse your dream peel off in about six to eight hours and use only healing products from here on. We're done. So let me answer a few common questions after this peel. Now, I have a little bit of pink on my face. How long is it gonna stay pink? How long will I have frosting? Most of the time, any frosting will be gone within 30 minutes. With Jesner's, the erythema, this pink, that can last a few hours or possibly a couple days. Not super normal, but it can happen. I also wanna mention swelling when you're doing a deeper peel. If you're applying several layers, let's say three or more, you could potentially see some swelling in the skin tomorrow. A cool compress should help and it will generally go away in a few hours. Any pigmentation you have on your face can become temporarily darker. If you're already dealing with hyperpigmentation, you'll notice that the spots will definitely look more intense. This is temporary and can happen with many people. It's just the pigment dumping into the upper layers. It's actually great if you're dealing with these spots as they're gonna be flaking off and getting lighter in the next week or so. Another reason for the darkness in the skin is that it's dead skin. Dead skin tends to turn darker before it flakes. Some people will see this and others will not. It's more prone in those doing several layers or a higher percentage. Just like before, the darkness will flake away once the skin starts peeling. Will this get rid of all of your pigmentation in a single peel? Most likely not. Even deeper peels aren't a miracle. Pigmentation runs very deep and can take an entire series of eight or more to get rid of. With peels, it's not a one-time event. Continue on and things will improve. Have patience and continue your daily treatments like our Fade Bright and SPF 50 in between peels. And how long will it take for the skin to peel? On average, facial skin will start to get dry and start the peeling process on day three or four after the application. It'll start around the nose and mouth and will radiate outwards over the course of the next four to six days. Your neck and chest will take longer to flake. Generally, they will just have a rough texture and you won't see large flakes. Expect this to start around day six to 10 and then go on for another week or so because these are body parts. Can I make it peel faster? Generally speaking, Jesner's will make the skin flake pretty fast. You can definitely intensify the flaking by using the luminosity for three days or the dream peel for one time. Any other methods aren't really gonna be beneficial. Just let the process happen naturally. Once your skin is actively flaking and the dead skin is mostly gone, an enzyme mask can help get the remainder off more quickly. Enzymes only target dead skin, so they're super beneficial to apply when you wanna get that excess skin off. I like to apply a mask every day after about day five to help remove the last flakes. How often can I do these peels? This depends entirely on how many layers you're applying. Follow our recommendations in your peel manual. On average, most will be looking at maybe one peel per month. If you have any more questions about applying acid peels or Jesner's, we're here to help you. Monday through Friday, nine to five Eastern. Just reach out to us. Have a great day.